Hello, my name's Mike Vesey. In this video, I'm introducing a framework that supports you to explore new ways of responding to the different levels of complexity we face in our day-to-day -day lives. Kenevin is a sense-making and decision-making framework which looks at the relationship between cause and effect, and it's built by Dave Snowden. Of all the tools we teach for understanding and leading in complexity, people find this one of the most helpful because it incorporates the traditional ways we've been taught to go about problem solving and making decisions and goes on to explain why these approaches are unhelpful for the more complex situations we increasingly find ourselves in and how we can respond instead. Kenevin has five domains. On the right, we have the predictable world, divided into clear or complicated. And on the left, in the unpredictable world, we have chaos and complex. Making sense of what domain you're in or your issue is in is from the point of view of the decision maker. And different people may make sense of the same situation in different ways. At the center of the framework is AC, or aware and confused the state of not knowing what domain you're in. I can be aware that I'm confused and I don't know, or I can be confused and not know it, which is not advised. Now we all start from this position of aware and confused, even if momentarily, wondering where we are and what to do. Deciding where to move an issue out of this domain into one of the other four domains will often depend on your personal preference and history. For example, administrators may tend to assess most problems as process failures, whereas professionals and specialists may assume there was not enough time to do the investigation or the analysis. Cognitive science suggests that rather than starting with a clear head, we assess a situation based on how we've already decided to act. With this in mind, it's a good idea to be aware of your pattern biases and pause for a moment before moving out of aware confused to be sure you're moving into the right domain and thus taking the right course of action. Now confused is an unhappy place, a state of not knowing and generally we humans don't like uncertainty. If we can't tolerate the confused domain, we risk jumping to conclusions about what sort of issue we are facing. So our first takeaway is to recognize that at times we need to get a little more comfortable with the uncomfortable and stay in the aware and confused space a little longer to use that time to think more deeply about the nature of the situation or challenge before rushing into action. In moving out of aware confused, the predictable or ordered world on the right divides into two, clear and complicated. In these ordered systems, there is a linear relationship between cause and effect. The same thing will happen again and again, and not by accident, but by the nature of the system. If I follow the same recipe when I bake my Christmas cake, the same oven, the same time, the same temperature, I can be fairly certain of the same result as last year. It's clear, simple and obvious. In the clear domain, everybody can see the relationship between cause and effect and nobody disputes it. The decision model, if your issue is in the clear domain, is to sense, categorize, respond. Nice and simple. This is a space of consistency, of standard operating procedures. It's a good space for many, although some of you or your people may say it sounds underwhelming and boring. The downside of placing an issue in the clear domain is that it takes a lot of energy, time and resources to both move and keep an issue in this domain. You have to devise operating procedures, train people and put in place monitoring and auditing systems. So you only want to move an issue into the clear domain if that cost can be justified, save for safety critical or essential regulatory reasons. The key difference between clear and complicated is the time and space between cause and effect. It's not quite so straightforward and immediate in complicated as it is in clear. Clear is known and familiar, complicated is unfamiliar yet knowable. There's a general sense that if we work through a series of steps, we will arrive at a solution. If, for example, we wanted to send a manned spacecraft to Mars, and people are looking into that, 
the engineers and scientists would have a fair idea at the outset of the sort of things they would have to do. But it would take time and require lots of experts to arrive at the answer. The decision-making model in a complicated domain is to sense, pro, sense, analyze, respond. I sense I am in this domain, I gather incoming data, I analyze it, that tells me what to do or tells me who to call in to tell me what to do. And whereas in a clear domain, I can apply best practice because there's one right way of doing things, in a complicated domain, I apply good practice because there are different ways of doing things depending on context. A major mistake that organizations make is to impose best practice in a good practice domain. Doctors, for example, know that there are variations which, in exceptional circumstances, they would take. Forcing them to only adopt one approach is a major mistake. You need a degree of variation in the system. Most professionals will use their judgment and expertise to search for a good solution based on their expertise in interpreting the data. And whilst another professional may reach a slightly different conclusion, they're all in the same ballpark. At the bottom of the framework between clear and chaos, you'll notice this squiggle. This boundary between clear and chaos represents a cliff edge. When things that were ticking along quite nicely in clear fall over, they can crash over the cliff and into chaos. This can happen if I over-constrain a system that can't naturally be constrained, or if I become complacent and reduce the level of monitoring and auditing. It takes very little energy to fall off a cliff, but it takes a lot of energy to climb back up it. Obviously, it's something to try and avoid. In the chaotic domain, there is no pattern between cause and effect. There are no constraints, things are all over the place. Humans don't like such situations and invariably their first action is to create a constraint, to act to try and stabilize the situation. The decision model in a truly chaotic system is to act first. There's no time to analyze or to probe. I act, then sense what's going on, and then I can respond. During the 9-11 attack in the US, at first no one knew what was going on. It was a novel situation, an unknowable. Those in charge, many of whom are steeped in the Kinevin framework, didn't have time to analyze the situation. They had to act first by grounding all planes in US airspace. Having stabilized the situation, they could then sense what was going on and could then respond. As rapidly increasing COVID numbers threatened to overwhelm healthcare systems and government across the world put in place stay at home, those in the corporate world had to act first and respond by indeed sending people home, closing offices, factories and construction sites. Only once the situation had stabilised was it possible to identify ways of experimenting with how to bring some key workers safely back to site. Chaos isn't necessarily bad. In fact, there might be some situations when I deliberately want to move things into the chaotic domain. Here I get rid of the constraints to create a sandpit or an innovation unit to generate new ideas. In the complex domain, there is no clear pattern or relationship between cause and effect. It is unknown, and by definition, it's not controllable. We might not even have agreement on what the issues are, yet alone possible solutions. Because we can't predict cause and effect with any certainty, we don't know the right solution or solutions until after we act, i.e. after the event and we see what happens. The decision model is to probe, sense, respond. In other words, I probe and generate possible ideas of hypotheses about what might nudge the system or issue towards a better outcome. I then conduct multiple safe to fail experiments in parallel with one another to reveal what's possible. And so I now have a sense and can respond accordingly. It isn't about only designing experiments that we are sure will succeed and avoiding those that might fail. Instead, it's about learning about what actions generate more of the outcomes we are looking for and what don't. Each experiment offers important learning. The boundary between complex and complicated is a key one because it tests the ways we've been taught to think and act quite considerably. 
On one side of the boundary, someone with the right training and the right qualifications can be trusted to get it right. On the other side of the boundary, they can't. They can only create hypotheses because each expert will come from the bounds of their expertise. Given a hammer, everything will look like a nail. If we treat a complex situation as complicated and the expert gets it wrong, we lose trust in expertise rather than realising we misdiagnose the situation. To sum up the complex, our decision approach is to probe, sense, respond, and the practice here emerges as we experiment and learn. Kinevin is a super helpful tool, helping you to identify the situation you're in, and it points towards how to approach decisions. Its value is that it respects the ordered world and the world of expertise that many of us feel comfortable with and indeed grew up in. But it also builds on it, offering a range of moves and actions to tackle issues and problems which don't fall into the ordered world, and most don't. Some issues we explore straddle several domains simultaneously. Topics like culture or diversity and inclusion are such issues, maybe a reorganisation or a new product development. An issue may have some aspects to it where there is clarity and which can be codified quickly into some operating procedures, whilst other facets require some experts to go away, investigate and report back. Whilst equally there are aspects which are complex. If you find that your issue is straddling lots of domains, break it down into smaller parts and map the parts accordingly and follow the decision-making steps we've been talking about in this video. To summarise, in CLEAR, everyone can see an obvious link between cause and effect, and we deploy best practice. In COMPLICATED, experts can find a link between cause and effect, and we reach for good practice. In COMPLEX, there is no discernible link between cause and effect, so practice is emergent or adaptive and comes through experimentation based on hypotheses. In CHAOS, there is the possibility of novel practice if you can make it safe to do so.